If you've ever used Sublime Text across multiple computers or even multiple different operating systems, you've probably run across a situation where you wish that the Sublime Text on one machine would behave the same way as it did on another. We all tend to have Sublime set up exactly the way that we would like it to work, and it can be a chore to get things back to that same situation. It turns out, though, that there is a very easy way to synchronize your installed packages and settings between all of the computers that you happen to use so your editing experience remains identical no matter where you are. And if you're not sure how to do that, not to worry, keep watching because I'm going to show you how. Hey, hello, fellas of Blind Text Fanatics, Odin here, and welcome to this week's video where we're going to be talking about how you can take the settings and packages that you have installed in one copy of Sublime Text and synchronize them across to another. There's a few reasons you might want to do something like that. You might be using Sublime Text at work and at home or across multiple different computers regardless and want them all to work the same way. You could even be moving between different operating systems as well. I, for example, use Sublime Text across Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And once you get something set up, you want all of the instances of it to behave exactly the same way. It makes for a more seamless editing experience. And Sublime Text actually makes it pretty easy to do something like this. Now, there are multiple different ways for you to synchronize files across different systems. You could do it by a direct file copy via some sort of file synchronization software like Dropbox or even via a source control mechanism such as Git. We're not going to cover all of the potential possibilities for that here. What we are going to teach you, though, is exactly what files you need to move and where you need to put them when you move them, and everything else will take care of itself. And if, if you use package control, and you, you really should be, then it also has documentation on how to do this for a few other different things as well, such as using Using Dropbox, and I've linked that down in the description below. Now, the files that we want to synchronize are the contents of our user package. This is the place where Sublime will automatically store key bindings that you modified, settings that you modified, whether those be global defaults, syntax specific, or even specific settings for particular packages. And when you create build systems, they end up in this location as well. Part of the reason for that is to make it easier to do what we're doing here right now and keep our settings all intact. And it's also the reason why if you want to modify a build system that ships with Sublime Text, it's usually advised to create your own based on it rather than overriding the default because overrides don't go into the user package. And if you're not sure what overrides are, not to worry because we're going to be talking about that in an upcoming video as well. So where do we actually find this user package to be able to synchronize it? Well, it's inside of the packages folder, and that is part of a configuration area that's set aside by Sublime Text on your system when you run Sublime for the very first time. The location of this particular location, known colloquially as the data directory, is dependent on whether you're using Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Different operating systems store it in a different place. And if you happen to be using a portable version, then it's stored in a completely different place yet again. Not to worry, though, because whether you are using Windows, Mac OS, or Linux portable version or not, the easy easiest way to find your user package and the packages folder in general is to use the menu item preferences browse packages and you can also choose this from the command palette as well. And that's going to open up in the file chooser of your particular operating system, whatever that happens to be, here Windows, the packages folder and there's going to be any number of things in here depending on what you've personally installed in your copy of Sublime Text, but one thing you will always find in here is the user package and that is the thing that we actually want to synchronize from computer to computer. Essentially, what we're going to do is take the contents of this folder and copy it to another system. And that could be a system that is the same operating system as this or something completely different. It doesn't really matter. And if you happen to be using package control, package control will automatically make sure that the installed packages that you have get synchronized to the new machine as well. And uh, keep watching to find out more information about that. And as we said, there are multiple potential ways for you to synchronize files across different systems. Manual file copies, services such as Dropbox that sync folders automatically, and using a version control system such as Git being amongst the three most popular. And in the case of version control systems, they provide you extra control over what gets synchronized and when the synchronization actually happens, which could potentially be beneficial depending on your use case. When all is said and done, the important thing is that the contents of the user package gets copied across to another system. The mechanism by which that happens doesn't really matter but there are a couple of things to be aware of. The first is that some packages may be storing files in your user package that have potentially revealing information. For example, passwords for websites that you access or license keys for packages that you've purchased. So however you're doing the synchronization, you always want to be wary that nobody is going to be able to see those files while they're in transit. You wouldn't want to synchronize your passwords file to a Git repository that's public, for example. Uh, the other thing to be wary of is that packages can 
and generate files into your user package that they need, such as color schemes or, or other data support files. These should always be safe to synchronize across systems. However, if you happen to be using a synchronization method such as Git, that where you have to specifically specify files, there may be some files that change so frequently that that will be a pain in the butt. So that's something to be wary of. That's sort of a package by package basis thing. An example of a package that does something like that is package control. And if you look in the documentation linked down in the description, it has more information about the file that you should probably exclude. So we know that we need to copy files and we know how to find these locations. The synchronization between systems is as easy as making the files go from point A to point B. For our example case here, we go to the folder that we previously opened in this copy of Sublime Text that shows the user package. I'm going to right click on this and choose to create a zip file named user.zip of all of the contents of my user package. Again, this has all of my configuration of Sublime Text, all my settings, all my customizations, everything is stored right now in this one zip file. So I'm going to copy this file, close this particular window. Now over here, I have a copy of Sublime Text that is a portable copy that is completely bone stock. So when I start this up, you can see everything is at the default. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to use the preferences browse packages to get to the packages folder. Now we can quit this copy of Sublime Text temporarily because we're going to be modifying its configuration. Paste the zip file in place alongside of the user package in this particular example and extract it out. And if we get any notification about files that are going to be overwritten, that's okay because we're synchronizing our settings. We know we want the new ones. You, of course, would probably want to take care of something like this happens to make sure that you're not going to accidentally clobber over something that you intended to keep. And once this operation is done, that's it. This copy of Sublime Text is now configured identically to the previous one. It's literally just that easy. Now, previously I said that if we do this, it'll synchronize not only our settings, but also the packages that we have installed as well. It doesn't seem like we did anything like that, but in fact we did, so long as we're using package control. And if you're not, why the heck not? It makes life so much easier. What we just did was take the configuration for everything in Sublime Text, including all of the packages that we have installed in Sublime Text and their unique configurations, and synchronize them from one copy to another. The settings for package control will be among those, and there's two key things about that that is interesting to this for us. One is that there's a setting for package control that tells it what packages you've told it to install, and the second is that it has a setting which is turned on by default that tells it that if it detects that there's a package that should be installed but isn't, that it should install said package. Those two things taken in concert mean that it will actually do the work of installing our packages and synchronizing everything else for us automatically. So all we have to do is start up this new copy of Sublime Text, go up into the menu and choose to install package control inside of this because it's a brand new copy and package control wasn't installed yet. And after package control is installed, it'll notice based on the settings that we've already set it up with that there are packages that are missing and it will slowly install those packages into the system. And when all of that is done, we'll be ready to go and this copy of Sublime Text will be identical to the one that we had previously. Now, of course, if you were to synchronize this into a copy of Sublime where package control was already installed, you wouldn't need to do that step and it will automatically take care of this. In fact, it also has a setting that will remove packages that are installed that aren't in the list. So if you synchronize this to a system where you used to be using a package and now you're not, it will also take the other package away, which is quite neat. And that is as easy as as all of this is to synchronize things across. Now, of course, in this example, we just use a simple zip file, but again, you could do this with Dropbox, you could do this with Git. Any sort of file transfer mechanism that will get files from point A to point B will make your copy of Sublime Text work the same across any system that you would like it to. And I hope you found this helpful and informative. If you have, please use the buttons down below and ring the bell so that next week when the video comes out, you will be here to see it. Don't forget, if you're watching this on the day this video drops, live stream tonight, eight o'clock Pacific, hope to see you there. And until the next video or the live stream, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.